Section 4.2, Precipitation Reactions. Reactions that result in the formation of an insoluble product is known as a precipitation reaction. So a precipitate is something that is not soluble and it falls out of solution and falls onto the bottom of the test tube. So if, it, uh, if you put too much sugar in cold iced tea and the sugar doesn't dissolve, then it falls to the bottom. So if you have two solutions that are not soluble in water, it will also fall out, and it's called a precipitate. So precipitation, like when rain precipitates or snow precipitates, it means that the air can't hold it anymore. It's not soluble to that amount of water, and the water falls out. That's what precipitate means. So a precipitate is something that's not soluble. Well, not every solid is soluble. In fact, there's some sol solids that are very insoluble. So a solubility of a substance um, depends on the temperature. So for instance, you can take hot tea and put lots of sugar in it and dissolve it and then cool it down and it's really, really sweet. But you can't take cold tea and put sugar because it won't hold it. So the, the temperature has to do with it. And a substance with a solubility, um, it's usually something like uh, less than 0.01 liters um, moles per liter is called insoluble. So anything that's just slightly soluble, a little bit less than 0.1 moles in a liter is called insoluble. And insoluble will form a, a precipitate and fall out. Okay, so... Um, the way I learned this is very tedious with long lists of compounds containing alkali metals or ammonium are soluble, compounds containing nitrates or, or acetates are soluble, compounds containing chloride, bromine, and iodide are soluble, exceptions are silver, mercury, and lead, compounds containing sulfate are soluble. Well, I had a friend who, because of her learning disability, had to teach herself these solubility rules and she made this schematic and it's beautiful and I use it every year I love it I can think with this very very easily what she's done is she's made a swimming pool anything in the pool is soluble anything out of the pool is insoluble and um, these guys these three right here are for these three and these yellow guys are for this lady Okay, so anything in the pool is soluble, anything out of the pool is insoluble. And this was so much easier for me to learn that I'm going to try to show you. The guys with the martinis are alkali metals. So alcohol is what she saw here, so alkali metals, which is group 1 metals. Anything in group 1, so potassium and sodium, any of those are always so, uh, soluble. So if you see potassium something, it will be soluble no matter what it's attached to. Even if it's attached to something that's generally insoluble, as long as it's attached to a group one, it's soluble. The other, see all these are positives. Remember these are all positive ones. The other one that's soluble that's a positive is, I included this one, I, I drew this one. This is a wet diaper. And wet diaper is ammonium, okay, NH4 plus ammonium. And it smells like a wet diaper, ammonia smell. So that's how where I got that. So it's positive one. So if ammonium is attached to anything, it's soluble. If group one, like potassium or sodium, is attached to anything, it's soluble, no matter what it is. Okay. The others, everything else is is those are cations. Everything else is anions. So the the next one, I see a guy with a heart, and she said he was having a heart attack. And whenever you have a heart patient, they always carry around a bottle of nitroglycerin. And that reminds her of nitrates. NO3. Totally hers. You could do this. If you have trouble learning, just make something that you can remember. Pictures or whatever sounds. And that's how she did it. So nitrate is always soluble. So anything nitrate, no matter what it is, is soluble. The grumpy lady. Um, well, let me write this one. Nitrate is C2H3O2, 
negative 1, and this is acetate. And I think that reminded her of uh, an old lady. I don't know why. The three kids swimming, she's got 7A here. It's not all of 7As. Remember, 7A starts with fluorine. Fluorine is not really soluble at all. But the ones below it are. So this would be like chlorine, bromine, and iodine. So group 7A, chlorine, bromine, and iodine are soluble. But there's three exceptions. Okay, that's why she has this, this exception mark. The first one is a bullet. So this is lead. The second one is a silver dollar. So this is silver. And the next one is a thermometer. So this is mercury. So mercury chloride or silver chloride or lead chloride or iodide or bromide, whatever one of the three, is insoluble. Anything in the pool is soluble. So some anything else chloride, anything else bromide, anything else iodide is soluble. Lead, silver, and mercury of those three are not soluble. Okay, do you see how easy this is? It's just much easier than, list, than a bunch of lists with exceptions. All right, on the side, I added the egg. Uh, a rotten egg smell is sulfur. That's what you're smelling with a rotten egg. And so these are sulfides. Sulfides, which is S negative 2. All right. Um, the one on the very bottom is high and dry. And so this is hydroxide. So normally something that's hydroxide is going to be less than 0.01 moles per liter and so it's considered insoluble. Uh, the lady, the yellow lady that's in the pool, the yellow set reminded her of sulfur and so this is sulfate. SO4 negative 2 sulfate and she's got six exceptions. So sulfates are soluble with the exception of six. All right, the first one is milk. Okay, so the milk would be calcium. So calcium sulfate's insoluble. And then um, three of these are the same as the chlorine, bromine, and iodide. So you've got a silver dollar, so this is silver. You've got lead, here's a bullet again, that's lead. And the mercury. Okay, so calcium, silver, lead, mercury are insoluble. The other two I thought were really cute. She's got a tombstone here. This is barium. Barium is a tombstone. So barium sulfate's insoluble. And then she's got barbells, and this is strontium, like she's strong. Okay, so calcium, silver, mercury, barium, strontium, lead. Those are the six exceptions to sulfate. The last two that are insoluble, she's got a coal car. This is carbonate, CO3, let me get rid of that. CO3, negative two, carbonate, because coal is carbon. And then she's got Fozzie Bear, this is phosphate, which is PO4. 3 minus. Okay, so you have to learn this. This is going to be an exam, just this page, uh, but it will help you in a thousand ways later as we have things that you have to know are soluble or insoluble. So here are the reactions that you would use insoluble for. It's called a precipitate. It's anything that is insoluble in water, especially, or any other solvent, will fall out to the bottom and you've got a precipitate. So these precipitate uh, reactions are also called exchange reactions or metathesis reactions. And um, what you're going to see is that you have things that are aqueous, and aqueous means soluble, and then one of the products is insoluble, and it falls out as a precipitate. So if you remember the swimming pool, all nitrates are soluble. Chloride is soluble ex except for lead, silver, and mercury. So potassium chloride is soluble. Okay, But when silver encounters chlorine, it's insoluble. And that's what the solid means. It's a solid precipitate. It falls out as solid. Then potassium is group 1. All group 1s are the, that's the martinis. All group 1 is soluble. 
and the nitrate, all nitrates, that's the heart attack guy, all nitrates are soluble. So you're going to see that a metathesis is, you're going to put two soluble liquids together, and then if they were to bump into each other the same as they were, like silver and nitrate, they would just break up again, nothing would happen, but if the silver ever bumped into the chlorine, it would form a solid and it would fall to the bottom, and that's called a precipitate. So we need to do a reaction uh, with these type of precipitates. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to use the chemical formulas to determine which ions are present because you need to know are they soluble or not, are they in the pool or not. Then write the formulas for the products, and then one reactant is the cation, the other is the anion. Essentially, you flip them ar around. We'll do it in a second. Check your uh, solubilities. Check the swimming pool. If either is insoluble, that's a solid, and it'll, it'll be a precipitate. And then you balance the equation. So let's try it. So you have, first of all, your molecular equation, which is your full equation. Then you're going to break all of that equation down into ions because it's the ions that are soluble or insoluble. And then anything that is uh, insol or soluble on both sides of the reaction, you just ignore them because they didn't, they didn't make anything. And then whatever's left over is called the net ionic equation. So we'll try it so that you can get a hang of it. So here's an example. You've got lead nitrate and potassium um, iodide. So I think back to the swimming pool. Um, nitrate is the heart attack guy. It's always soluble. That means lead nitrate is soluble. Okay, that's what aqueous means. Potassium iodide. Potassium is the martini guy, so all, everything is soluble. And iodide is one of the swimming kids, and it's soluble as long as it's not lead, mercury, or silver. That means these two guys are soluble. So you have two soluble clear liquids you pour them together, and what happens? Well, if the nitrate encounters the potassium, that's not a problem because all nitrates are soluble and all potassiums are soluble. Okay, so that's aqueous. But if the lead encounters the iodide, those are the three exceptions for the swimming kids. Silver, lead, mercury, and this is lead. So lead iodide is solid it falls out as a precipitate. So this is called the molecular equation. All of the, all of the different uh, molecules are there. You write them as if they were molecules, even though in water, they're never gonna be together, but you, you write them down as though they were together, okay? as though they were salts. Because if you were put any of this in water, they completely break apart, they dissociate because they're ionic. All of these are ionic compounds. The only problem with the lead iodide is it's an ionic compound that's not soluble in water. All right, so now we take the first molecule that we had and we realize that in aqueous means it breaks apart into its ions. So I've got two nitrates, that's what this subscript's for, and then a lead. So I've got, um, remember this, nitrate's negative one. I've got two negative ones, that means the lead has to be positive two. So I have lead floating around the water. It's aqueous, no problem. I've got nitrates floating around the water, no problem. I've got potassium floating around the water and iodide. All we did was break it apart into its ionic, its ions. This is called an ionic, uh, an aqueous or an ionic equation. Okay, so ionic, it break it apart into its ions. You do the same for the for the um, products, except you can't do that for sulf for a solid because it's it's together, it doesn't break apart. The potassium breaks apart from the nitrate and you end up with potassium and nitrate. Okay, so you break up all of the ions. This is called the ionic equation. Now, here is all the ions. You have the lead, you have the nitrate, you have the potassium, you have the iodide, then you have the arrow. You have potassium again, nitrate, and then the lead iodide. Well, you see that there's nitrates on both sides. They're floating around in the water, not doing anything, okay? They are spectator. These are called spectator ions. They simply are watching. The other one that's on both sides of the arrow are the potassiums. These are spectator ions as well. So what you do is you, once you get everything down to ions, you look for which ones are the same on both sides of the arrow. 
cancel those out, and then whatever's left is going to be the reaction, and that's called the net ionic equation, and the net would be what's left over. So your net pay is, is what you have after taxes. Okay, that's leftovers. So the net reaction would be lead, okay? I'll circle those lead, PB2 plus aqueous, plus two iodines aqueous, yields lead iodide, uh, which is a solid. Those are the only two, three things that you're gonna have in your net ionic equation. And that's the net ionic equation. Lead plus two iodines yields lead iodide. Everything else just kind of is floating around in the water and doesn't really count.